The topic is the king is coming and while having that as the topic for this morning we are aware that we were on Palm Sunday and we sang with the children and we waved our palms to show gratitude and to remember that great event that took place many years ago. The story is this. Five days before his death, Jesus rides into Jerusalem. He had stayed for a little while in Bethany, a nearby village, and had supper in the home of Mary and Martha. And after his meal, or during this time, it was that Mary anoints the feet of Jesus and wipes it with their hair. She used a costly uh, uh, spikenard perfume and uh, it was very symbolic. This event was very symbolic in that it was relating to the death of Jesus himself. And thereafter, we know that Jesus then goes to Jerusalem. Now, all homes have celebrations. In every one of our homes, we have some kind of event that's a little bit, ordin little bit out of the ordinary. It could be a bed day, it could be an anniversary, maybe a wedding, maybe a graduation or some other special event. Functions are held and guests are invited. And it can be absolutely disappointing when you invite people and they don't pitch up because all of the events are really about people. It's got really very little to do with the venue. You may have a great venue, but the venue is not the hint thing, neither is the decor or the food or the outfit. It's always about people. It's about what they say. It's about what they don't say or forget to say. All events are really about people. <coughs> and in the story here, we note that there was a special event that was being prepared. And sometimes uh, we find that families are in the habit, mom and dad, when they see the children do well, maybe for their bed day or for their graduation, they will give them the permission. Say, well, son, daughter, you go and arrange your own party. And sometimes it is just among their friends and it is a gratitude from the parents to have the children have an enjoyable time. Like I said in this story, we have Jesus arranging his own event. He was required to arrange a celebration. And that celebration had him riding into town as a king. It was Jesus' moment. He was called to make a statement. If King Herod was asked to create his own or make his own celebration, I am confident that there will be horses and chariots and soldiers there would be security and band and dignitaries and the red carpet with flags waving. 
There was a celebration not too long ago. In fact, Prince Charles waited patiently for his mother to die. And finally she did die at the age of 96. Took a long time. Then on the 6th of May 2023, he had his moment, he had his celebration, he was crowned. For his celebration, he had dignitaries from most parts of the world. He had 6,000 British military personnel, multiple horses and chariots. The event was viewed by 20.4 million people throughout the world. His crown was made of solid gold with 444 gemstones, including rubies and garnets and sapphire and uh, turbulines. The crown itself weighed 5 pounds or 2.27 kg. The crown cost $57 million. That's one billion seventy million two hundred and seven thousand rands. The crowning ceremony itself was cost one hundred and twenty five million dollars. That's over twenty three million rands. And if you ask Prince Charles what was his net worth, Prince Charles is worth two point three billion dollars. So here we have a very rich king and then we have Jesus as our king. Prince Charles or King Charles is worth 2.3 billion dollars. And our King Jesus is worth so much that we cannot even find a figure he has huge deposits, huge deposits of gold, silver, cobalt, diamonds in every location in the world, throughout the world. And everything inside this world belongs to him. And if you didn't know, let me tell you quickly that you as you sit here are a shareholder you are a joint heir with Jesus Christ. And what he owns, you will become a partaker of. And that is God's word for you. Let's get back into the story quickly. We have the story in Matthew chapter 21, reading from verse number 1 onwards. And when they drew nigh to Jerusalem, and they came to Bethpage, unto the Mount of Olives, then sent Jesus to the disciples, saying unto them, Go into the village over against you, and straight away you shall find an ass tied, and a colt with the air. Loose them, and bring them unto me. And if any man ask or say aught, Unto you you shall say, The Lord hath need of them, and straight away he will send them. All this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet, saying, Tell ye the daughters of Zion, Behold, thy king cometh unto thee, meek, and sitting upon an ass, and a colt, the foal of an ass. And the disciples went and did as Jesus commanded and brought the ass and the colt and put on them their clothes and they set him thereon. And a very great multitude spread the garments on the way. Others cut down branches from the trees and strew them on the way. And the multitudes that were before and that followed, cried, saying, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed be he that cometh in the name of the Lord. 
Hosanna in the highest. And when he was come unto Jerusalem, all the city was moved, saying, Who is this? And the multitude said, This is Jesus, the prophet of Nazareth of Galilee. We note that while donkeys are everywhere, carrying goods, carrying people, plowing the field and grinding at the mill, Jesus was so specific. He said, go to a particular village. Go to a particular street. Go to a particular place for two particular donkeys. As we sit here today, we too were called and chosen and brought. Some of us from obscure places coming to Jesus did something. We were united. We were loosed from our entanglements. The chains that were around us and kept us bound have fallen away. Prison bars were removed. And we are here today. We never thought that this kind of action would take place, but nevertheless we are here. Coming to Jesus always does something. And here we find that Jesus looks for two particular donkeys. One is the mother and the other the child. Mother may be to come and console the child while Jesus rides on the, on the back of that child. Child meaning a, a young donkey that hadn't been ridden before. Why a donkey? You know, when I've read this a while back, some years back, I've been pondering, was this the best that Jesus could do? I mean, here he was given an open card. Go create your celebration. And when we've given mega, when we have mega bucks and we have an opportunity to create an event, some of us will really go out of our way to make it as elaborate as possible, high-catching as possible. And here Jesus was given this opportunity. What was the statement he was going to make? He was going to make a statement. What was that statement? Well, he said it to the disciples when he asked them to go and bring the donkeys. He said it then. He said, tell the owners if they ask that the Lord has sent you. So Jesus was going to establish himself as the Lord, as God. And he was also going to establish himself as the king. And then these donkeys are brought in. And we note that they put their garments, the, soldier, the disciples put the garments on the donkeys and allow Jesus to sit on the one donkey while they led the other along. What was this about? Why? Why in this fashion? Well, Zechariah 9.9 9 tells us, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, daughter 
of Jerusalem. See your king come to you, righteous and having salvation, gentle and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. You see, a horse couldn't have been used. I would have thought a nice horse, maybe a white horse, a stallion, would be ideal. But we know that the horse is linked to military. And so it couldn't be used for kingship. And as we look through the Old Testament, we find throughout mules or donkeys were used as modes of transport when there was the crowning of a king. We note in the, in the case of King Solomon, for instance, they had uh, King David's mule, which they used. Uh, they put the garments on, on the back of that mule, and they allowed Solomon to come through. And Solomon rode that mule till he came to Jehor. And there we have the priest Zadok, who takes the oil from the sacred tent and anoints him as king. And then the people shout, long live King Solomon. So that was the custom. The custom was the mule. And for all of the coronations and all of the crownings, there were the mules or the donkeys. And this was no different. The donkey itself we would not look uh, uh, so highly upon, but it was a very important animal. And the Bible notes two animals that spoke, and the donkey was one of them. Do you know the other? I'm sure you do. You remember the case where Balaam, the prophet, was going on a funny mission, and God wanted to stop him fulfilling that mission. And what he does, he makes the donkey ignore the wishes of that prophet. The donkey stops moving forward. Balaam takes the whip and he keeps whipping that donkey. And eventually the donkey turns around and looks at the prophet and says, Come on, what's happening to you? Why are you eating me like that? And Balaam kept on hitting that donkey. And eventually God opens the eyes of Balaam and he sees. He sees things that made him understand why the donkey couldn't move forward. Because of things on the way as obstacles. So here we have this instant where the Bible predicts 520 years earlier that Jesus was going to ride in town and he was going to ride on a donkey. And this was prophetic and yet it happened. And suddenly Jesus comes riding into town on the donkey. And the people shout, he is here, he is here. The king is here. Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. They clap their hands. They dance. They wave palm leaves. And they throw the garments on the ground. Our king is here. Our king is here. This is our king. He's the king of our hearts. He's the king of our lives. Behold, our king is here. He is our everything. Jesus was high and lifted up. 
And he rode boldly, he rode visibly, he rode authoritatively, he rode triumphantly. Nothing could stop him. The king was in town. I want to tell you today that Jesus could have lined the streets with the Evans finery. Jesus could have had legions of angels, chariots of fires, massive choirs. Jesus could have had all of these things for his celebration. But he didn't. It wasn't about things. Jesus didn't want that. What he wanted was his people. And he wanted their praise. That is what Jesus was looking for, his people and his praise. And as we join in praise this moment as the band comes forward for a few minutes, Jesus was looking to the people and he got what they had to give, their praise. They shouted, Hosanna to the king. Hosanna to him. Hosanna. And the entire crowd were moved. And I think the authorities in that day got a shock. And they hastened their mischievous plot to have Jesus killed. Because they found or they felt that his presence was a threat. And yea, he was declaring himself as the king indeed. So the waving of the palm leaves, the clapping and the dancing did something. Jesus was moved. Not moved by the decor and moved by, the, by what they had to show, but moved by their praise. And that lifted God. And God is interested in our praise today as we would stand to our feet and spend a few minutes praising him. He is our king. He is our everything. We need to seek no other. We thank God today. Praise his name.
we praise your name. We praise your name. Thank you, our Heavenly Father, for touching us today. Deeply grateful, O oh God. Even as we would go on our way, may the sweet fellowship of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit remain with us always, even till Jesus comes. And everybody said, Amen. God bless you, church.